the coast of the Galapagos Islands, 9.2 tons of cocaine, uh, one single bus. We were pretty pumped up. I mean, we were excited about it. Got back to the U.S. and I wasn't the ready team, so we had some couple days off. And then my phone started ringing. The beeper was going off. And another guy, Joe Algieri, who kept calling me. And my buddy, Joven, who was on my team, he says, hey, we're, we're coming to get you. We're going to war. I'm like, going to war? What are you talking about? And it was 9-11. Uh, the towers just got hit. The plane has crashed into one of the towers. Today, we've had a national tragedy. Two airplanes have crashed. And, you know, it, 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 it was a surreal moment for me to be driving in Miami back to our office in Opelaka, knowing that the world just changed and our teams got sent to New York. Our team actually got to walk up on that rubble and that's where uh, Darren and I met up at, was in New York. You know, you got leaders and you got followers, you know, and he was definitely a leader. So I think that it, he helped us very much so as a team, you know, just his, just his being there, just his attitude day in, day out. blue-collar town, blue-collar parents, and uh, you know they worked really hard. And I think my parents instilled in me as a kid that if you're gonna do something, do it 100%. Don't do a half-ass. I started working construction with my parents when I was a young kid, probably 10 years old, you know, laying brick or just helping build scaffolding. So, you know, we work hard and play hard. And uh, I grew up playing hockey. It was, a, it was just a way of life. It wasn't just about winning. It was about giving it 100% all the time. Well, I think there was always in the back of my mind, I wanted to go into military, but I don't think I really knew what I wanted to do. Everyone thinks about the military. You want to be a Navy SEAL or, you know, you want to be a helicopter pilot. But um, I qualified to do anything that the Coast Guard had to offer. So I said, oh, you know, this seems like a better option for me. I make decisions pretty quick. I'm a pretty fast mover. And uh, so I came home and I told my dad, I said, I'm going to the Coast Guard. And then the next thing you know, a decision's made. And, you know, raised my right hand and changed my life. The New York City Police Department is larger than the Coast Guard. I mean, if you really think about that, the Coast Guard has people deployed all over the world. Most people don't know half the things the Coast Guard does or ever did. I was on Team 401, TAC the South, which is the actual unit, and LIDA is a team in the unit. Law enforcement detachment team, in my opinion, and back then it was the elite team out of the teams. Everybody that was at a tackle that team um, wasn't there because they had to be there. It's because they wanted to better themselves. They wanted they wanted to be there. Not only are you training all the time as a team, when you're back in port, we all hung out together. We'd go to bars together, you know, we'd be at each other's houses together. So not only are you deployed with these guys, when you come back to the US, it's a brotherhood. You know, we're always thinking about what can we do better. You know, what's the best thing for certain situations? You know, and that's how we, we practice that day in, day out. You know, we worked out together two hours a day. And so we're always in contact, you know, constantly in contact with each other and just became a brotherhood. We'd go on U.S. Navy ships, Dutch ships, British ships, and then we'd go into these other countries like you know, Costa Rica, Venezuela, Colombia, Suriname. But our primary mission was to stop the cocaine from coming into the U.S. So it was the Cali cartel. It, it's hard to explain. I mean, can you imagine what nine tons of cocaine looks like? Probably can't, right? Never seen it. You could see that this cocaine wasn't gonna make it to the US. That would just motivate you, work harder and train harder, whatever the training that you were gonna do. We wanted to do it 100 times more than everyone else because we wanted to make sure we were elite and we were the best team out there. This is a different kind of team, you know, you know, a sports team or whatever, yeah, you're all together. In this kind of environment, this kind of team, you know, you're gonna back them up whether it's your life or not. That's the difference. I could tell you anything that these guys were gonna do at any given moment, you know. 
if we were doing a boarding, you know, I knew where they were going to be at. I knew exactly where they were going to be at. I knew exactly what they were thinking most of the time. I knew what they were, they were, I didn't have to second guess anything. That's what being the team is. When your team's ready and you're patting each other's on the shoulders and you know you're going in to stop, you know, some of the most ruthless drug dealers in the world, the Colombian cartels, people on the other side of those passageways, they want to kill you. You have an opportunity to change something in the world. It's almost beyond adrenaline. And just think bail after bail, knowing that it's not going to get to the U.S. It's not going to go in someone's veins. It's not going to go up someone's nose. That's, a, that's something that we're doing to protect the U.S. That feeling is just, it's badass. Still something that was unknown and the danger was pretty high. And, uh, but he took it head on. He was such a hard charger. You know, that was very impressive for me. I happened to be in contact with a company that uh, wanted me to do some contract work. So the first person I went to was Darren. That's all it took. I really liked, you know, chasing the narcos, the bad guys down in Colombia. I really enjoyed that. But this was another, I'd say, another opportunity that I thought was going to be challenging and, and give me a, a, a different rush, for lack of a better word. Um, that's when I made the decision, you know what? I'm gonna go work for this contract company overseas. You know, my job was to restore civil order in a war-torn country. I, I got sent to East Timor. I was a commander. It's probably one of the worst places I've ever served in my life. You know, they still had cannibalism. You know, there's a lot of places in the world that are still pretty bad places to go, and that was one of them. And again, it goes back to being in the United States. You know, we complain, someone might not like our, the political leader that we have in charge right now, or they didn't like the last one. No matter what, no matter how bad it is in the U.S. for you on a specific day, it's better than a lot of the countries that are out there. I mean, we have all the opportunities in the world in the United States. Well, transition from military life to, you know, to civilian life can be extremely difficult, especially if you're going, you know, back to civilian life, not really knowing what you're doing or if you're just going to work for a company. I guarantee there's very few companies out there that are, that are military oriented in their thinking. You know, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur growing up. And even though I went in the military, in the back of my mind, I knew one day that I'd be an entrepreneur. And then when I came back to the U.S., you know, I had goals and I had, a, I had a mission in my mind what I wanted to do. And I came back for a short time and I got introduced to my current business partner, Marty Fuller. And uh, we hit it off and he went to the Coast Guard Academy. Complete coincidence or random. And he knew about the lead and, and he knew, he understood how I operate and my leadership abilities that I learned from the Coast Guard and from growing up. He offered me, you know, an opportunity and I thought about it and I said, you know what? I can do one of two things. I can say no and wonder what will ever happen and I don't like to live life like that. I was like, you know what, this is a challenge and I like challenges, so I'm gonna go through that door and I'm gonna go full speed ahead. So we're a manufacturing company. We make stainless steel pipe for venting systems. Also we make um, tubular skylights, traditional skylights and solaritic fans. We started with about two locations when I got involved. We were only a couple million dollars in sales, and now we have nine locations around the country, over 300 employees, and you know, we have a phenomenal team. And we run the company on core values, and uh, our sales are more than $2 million. <laughs> he took those good the core values, he took the good things that he learned, the things he learned from good leadership, and separated that from those that he knows you know, was not good leadership. If I were to go back and talk to one of my former uh, teammates, everything that we've been through together, I need to show them and they need to show me that we are continuing with the Coast Guard core values in life, just like the same thing in the Army, the Navy. If you're a veteran and you get into the civilian world, why do you let it go? Continue with what you were doing that made you successful in your branch of military. You know, you, you've heard me say before, every day GSD, get shit done. You know, Every day when I wake up, I know what I want to do for the day. I think doors open for people all the time, but they just don't go through them. Listen, if I didn't walk through that door with Marty Fuller, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I wouldn't be writing a book telling about my story. Listen, my passion wasn't manufacturing. 
but my passion is working with people. And because of the goals I've set and the team that surrounded me has allowed me to accomplish these things. If you have a team of people that are all working for the same goal, you're gonna accomplish what the mission is. It's very simple. I mean, this, is, this isn't Business 101, this is Life 101.